In this video, I'll be answering questions submitted by PaintShop Pro users on a variety of topics. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written copy of this QA session and submit your own questions to be answered in future videos. Our first question is, when trying to add text as a selection, my pick tool moves the background image instead of the floating text. How can I get the text to move? This sounds like a layers issue. I'm creating text as a selection on this image, which is placed on its own vector layer while I'm creating it. When I double click to complete the text, the selection becomes part of the background layer. When I activate the pick tool and click the image, the text selection moves to its own promoted selection layer. When moving the text, it's important that its layer is active. If I click the background image, that layer will be active and that's what will move. So I'll make sure the promoted selection layer is active so that the text will move. Keep in mind the text as selection is not editable, whereas vector text is editable. If I add vector text, I can easily resize, rotate, or move the text, and double click inside the text if I want to make edits. While the text is being edited, I can use Cutter Preview to see how the text selection will look, then use Text Cutter to create the selection. I now have the selection in its own image and on its own cutter layer in the original image. The original text still has its own layer, which can be toggled back on. Is there a tutorial on how to create a shadow on different parts of an image? I created a photo mock-up for a t-shirt on which I will add my digital design and I'd like to make it look more realistic. In this t-shirt image, like in many clothing images we see online, there are some loose wrinkles which add realistic looking shadows to the image. I have a logo in another image with a transparent background, and I'll drag its layer into the t-shirt image and resize with the pick tool. The default blend mode is normal, and the green and blue areas of the logo completely cover the wrinkles of the background layer below. I'll switch the mode to Darken, which brings out the shadows. I can also fade the logo by reducing its layer opacity. The Multiply Blend works even better, even at full opacity. The best blend mode for your design will depend on the colors found in both layers. If I place the same logo on a darker t-shirt that has some texture, I'll get nice results with Overlay Blend or Hard Light with reduced opacity. With Soft Light at full opacity, the logo is a bit faded, but I can duplicate the layer once or twice to strengthen the logo. You'll have to experiment with the various blend modes to see what works best for your designs. I want to do a black and white line tracing on a layer over a photo. When I start drawing lines, they appear to enclose areas of white overlaying the image. Why are there areas of white instead of just the black lines? This question is related to fills. To trace over this cupcake, I'll activate the pen tool. I'm drawing point to point with connected segments and a 10 point outline thickness. The foreground swatch sets the outline color and the background swatch sets the fill color. So as I'm tracing, the shape is filled with white. I'll finish by clicking Close Selected Open Contours. I can easily remove the fill by using the pick tool to select the vector shape and clicking the transparent icon for the background swatch or I could have started the tracing with a transparent fill. Fills work the same way for shapes as well. If I draw an ellipse over one cupcake, it will have this outline and this fill. I can select the shape and remove the fill, or start over with no fill. To adjust the ellipse to fit the photo, I'll go straight to the pen tool, right click and convert the ellipse to a path, and add a few more nodes by holding control and clicking on the path. Our next three questions involve making selections. PaintShop Pro has some powerful tools that enable you to select objects and extract them from images in order to manipulate them, place them on a new background, or add them to another image. We'll go through the specific scenarios from user questions, but we would also encourage you to watch our in-depth selection tutorials, which are linked in the description below. These tutorials will help you understand how to choose the right selection tool for what you're trying to accomplish. I have an image that contains text, and I want to select only the text and nothing else. 
I also want to copy the text to a text file. Is there a way to do this? When trying to select only text or any other object from an image, always check your layers first. If you are lucky enough to be working with a file that has text on its own layer, and the text is on a vector layer, then you can use the Pick tool to select that layer. I can then double-click inside the text to edit it. I could use Ctrl-A to select all characters, Ctrl-C to copy, and then I could paste the text elsewhere. Or I could use the Pick tool to select the text layer and drag the layer into blank space, which copies the text into its own image. This text is still vector text and could be edited, selected, and copied. Another way to get vector text into its own image is to press Ctrl-C while its layer is selected, then choose Edit, Paste as New Image. If you have text on its own raster layer, you can still separate out the text the same way. But this text isn't vector text, so it can't be edited or copied. If you have a single layer image, you'll have to use a selection tool to grab the text. There are five available tools in the selection flyout. The best one for text like this is Magic Wand. With the mode set to Add and Contiguous unchecked, I can click inside any layer to select them all. If I want to include the letter outlines as well, I can choose Selections, Modify, Expand, check Preview on Image, and extend each selection boundary by a pixel or two. If needed, I could also use Replace or Remove mode to change the selected pixels. With all letters selected, I'll activate the Pick tool, then click anywhere in the image to place what's selected on its own promoted layer. Then I can drag that layer into blank space or copy and paste as a new image to make a fresh image with just the selected pixels. I'm having a hard time trying to select a portion of my photo to use with another photo. There are a few ways to place one part of an image into another image. I want to isolate the child in this image and place her elsewhere. So I'll use the Smart Selection brush, starting in Add mode, and I'll drag over what I want to select. I can click to add any pixels that were left out, and switch to Remove mode and click to take out pixels. I'll press Ctrl-C to copy the selection, make the new background image active, and choose Edit, Paste as New Layer. This layer is now active, so I can use the Pick tool to resize and move. Another way to do the same thing is to remove the background in the first image. First, I'll use the Selection tool to select just the subject and choose Image, Crop to Selection. Now I'll activate the Background Eraser tool and carefully trace around, making sure to keep the center of the brush in the background. Once the background is gone, I can copy and paste as new layer as before. In this example, removing the background took more time than the Smart Selection Brush method, but the best method for you will depend on the contents of your photo. I was given a lens ball and cannot figure out how to flip just the ball in my pictures. This is another example of knowing how to select just what you want. The lens ball is almost always a perfect circle, so I'll use the selection tool, change the selection type to circle, start at the center and draw out the selection circle. To move the circle so that it's centered, I'll drag it while holding the right mouse button. In my example, the selection circle is a bit too large. So I'll choose Selections, Modify, Contract, Keep Preview on Image checked, and increase the number of pixels until the circle traces the lens ball. To make it possible to rotate just the selection, it needs to be on its own layer. So I'll choose Selections, Promote Selection to Layer. With this new layer selected, I'll choose Image, Free Rotate. I'll uncheck all layers so that only the selected layer will be affected, and I'll rotate by 180 degrees. Finally, I'll press Ctrl D to clear the selection. This brings us to the end of our PaintShop Pro Q&A session. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, please follow the link in the description below, which will take you to this tutorial page in Corel's Discovery Center. Here you'll also find a written version of this tutorial, and you can submit your own questions to be answered in future videos.